Our guest today is an ambassador for art, a Bisbee icon, and my dear, dear friend, Gretchen Bear. Hey, Gretchen, how you doing? I am great. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah. Yeah. So, so where, where are you right now? Is this your art, art, your art studio? Yeah, I'm at my studio at Central School Project in Bisbee. My first question goes to Bingo. Okay. So it's been a little while. You wouldn't happen to have a joke for me? That's my question. Oh God, we're starting off big. Yeah. <laughs> Do you really I'm think I'm so not ready for a joke for you? Are you kidding me? Okay, this is what I got. This is what I got for today. I'll have to explain it to Tarek again. That's probably very true. But <laughs> so it goes a little something like this. A blonde drops off her dress at the dry cleaners. The dry cleaner says, come again. The blonde says, no, it's toothpaste this time. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Can you, can you explain that one to me later? No, I'll do that off air. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. wait, I get it. I get Shut it, yeah, I get it. So, Gretchen, I have two of your paintings in my house, and they're absolutely gorgeous and so full of color. It has always been a thing for me. I sort of live for color. I think that's one of the things where Bingo and I kind of connected originally was seeing each other in color and responding to that. So yeah, I, it's like I eat it. Like I want color for breakfast, <laughs> color for lunch. Yeah, Bingo has been a muse of mine for as long as I've known her. A I've long time. For over the years. And of course, a lot of photo photography and projects and stuff like that, Bingo centric, because hello. It's bingo. I've seen a bunch of pictures of bingo, especially during COVID. Um, you got, you took all those pictures, right? Yeah, the bingo um, pandemic wall um, series. Yep. Yeah. So bingo was, um, well, you can give your side of the story, but you know, she was oh, heavily in quarantine and um, I would only come to the wall. I was not going any further than that. And we would have different ideas for different days of what she might be doing on the wall or where um, Bingo, your, your, your ideas, our head was at at that time, which was, um, it was fun. It was like something fun to look forward to last summer when things were really locked down. Well, I think you gave me a reason to dress up even for myself. For other people, we put the pictures out there and it was a reason for me to dress up. And, you know, I was stuck in quarantine. We were, we were in masks. We were distancing. We did it right. Yeah. But it, it was a reason to get out of bed, you know, yeah. for sure. Back then. There, there's one distinctive picture. You're wearing a gas mask. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and you, it's like you're peering out of a gate. Uh -huh. That one stuck with me. What is that process like? We um, we collaborate. Like, I think that was perhaps the first photograph of the pandemic series. And Bingo wanted to wear a gas mask. So I think it was maybe my suggestion. How about just peering out of the gate, you know, as like, uh, you know, the beginning of what continued on. And then yeah. Bingo had ideas from there. And we just worked back and forth. We just have fun enough together that I think, it, and, and a mutual appreciation of color and yeah style or whatever that um it, it tends to read as like we're having fun and yeah, i think uh, the fun is the key word the yeah. first time i realized i wasn't photogenic is when we <laughs> did the first vodka juice box picture oh, that you shot where gosh. we were jumping in front of a strawberry uh -huh. they looked like a like a angel fun and i looked <laughs> like i have no idea what i'm doing i disagree <laughs> I 100% disagree. That was I do too. You. And um, of course, I thought you were adorable. You were dressed amazingly. And it like just worked. You guys looked great. And it was fun to photograph you um, against a big mural. And um, so now you're really photogenic. Hello. I want to know, as we've all become vaccinated at this point, 
Uh -huh. um, and we're just sort of like, just like bingo, poking our head out the door with that gas mask on. We're like not wearing the gas mask and we're going to see friends and stuff. But it's like hard too because you've been trained otherwise. So like, how are you guys doing? Um, how are you able, have you bridged the gap yet? Or are you feeling like you can go out in society or are you still kind of uh, I think for me, I love talking to doctors remotely now huh. because yeah. I don't need or want to be in their presence. And those are the ones you get around here. Yeah. So that's been kind of a change for me. And um, we've been making more music because of quarantine. Well, we started making music because of quarantine. That's how Vodka Juice Box started. And now there's more reason to dress up and make someone laugh try to make someone laugh it's like i dress up too much just to do one stupid thing because i'm all excited you know yeah. <laughs> you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror okay okay <laughs> all right okay so i want to talk to you about mariposa but you first started out with the border bedazzlers right so how did that come about and how did it segue into Mariposa? Okay. All right. Buckle up. It takes a minute. Okay. Well, well, we're ready. Okay. Um, it started in um, 2008. You know, you know me. I'm a huge Hillary Clinton fan, and I drive a Hillary Clinton car. That's an art car. And I went all the, around the country with her in 2008, as well as 2016. In any case, the first time around, she lost and I was just bummed and I wanted to do some, I got kind of like the taste of doing something bigger than yourself, you know, something like more important. And it was like just doing normal things in my studio seemed boring after like crossing the country with Hillary and doing all that stuff. It was really like a heady time. So I wanted something bigger. I was trying to think what could it be? So I thought, well, there's the border wall that could be painted on. And I really didn't know. I checked out both sides and realized, oh, it's the Mexican side. And then as soon as I started painting, kids just flocked to it. And it very quickly became a kid's project. Um, yeah. so, um, so that well, was amazing. So, so it wasn't initially, it wasn't necessarily intended to be a kid no. project. No. Because you started painting. Yeah. No. The kids well, responded to that. Painting the entire, I don't know what I had originally in mind, like, oh, I'm going to paint the whole wall or whatever. Right. It was just like, oh, let's just try this. And, and then it grew, you know? Um, so, um, so yeah, but the kids were really drawn to us doing that. And, um, and that's what it became. So every week when we would go down for like six years, I think it took a, took about six years to paint a full mile of the Mexican side of the border wall down here in um, Naco, Mexico. Um, and so, yeah, it was like this really long, beautiful um, canvas um, that, you know, was the wall. Um, so that was amazing and fun over the years. And, uh, and I did it all the way up until 2016, which took me again around the country with Hillary and doing that same thing again. And, a little differently, but, um, and then when I came back to it, that's when Trump, of course, won, and right. um, they were going to tear down the border wall. At the same time, it was just a weird time and a sad time. In fact, Bingo was in a coma at that time, so I had a lot of things going on that were really upsetting to me. It was like, Hillary lost. Um, the border wall, six years of work, a mile long project was being torn down wow. and in a freaking coma. And I was like, and other stuff was, on. I lost another friend around that time. And it was like, just the saddest time ever. And I was like, these kids, I cannot leave them like, yeah, you guys, yeah, whatever. Like, no, we're going to do something. You know, we're going to, we're not going to, we're not going to accept this. And so, um, I just spoke to the right guy, a, a, an 80 year old um, a fellow named Tom Carlson who works across the border every day, uh, amazing guy. Um, and he just said, hey, I'll meet you tomorrow down in Naco, Mexico. And he gave me the keys to a building the next day. <laughs> so I had the building, um, which is only about like 500 feet from the border. Yeah. So as soon as you cross over, 
there's our building. And so that was five years ago now. Um, so since then, it, it, it became Studio Mariposa very quickly. I opened it on inauguration day of Trump. Um, and it's been going ever since, every week, every Tuesday. Um, when it wasn't pandemic, the kids would come and we would make art and music together, all kinds of art. And there'd be like a hundred kids that would come every week and we would have all kinds of pro uh, projects in a band. We had, a, we had a wonderful band and all sorts of stuff going on, weaving, uh, painting, every kind of project you could think of artistically. Um, and then when COVID came along, I was like, huh, now what do we do? Um, but um, so I started with art bags, like a Mariposa art bag. So um, we would put art supplies in the bags that the kids would just come and pick up every week. Um, so we've been doing that ever since, um, uh, since the pandemic. And um, my friend, uh, Linda Santianas and Ralph Shrine help me every week. And I've got a crew of kids on the other side that um, help every week. And um, we, uh, we give out 300 to 400 bags to kids every week. Um, oh, wow. but, um, so we have a lot, the project has grown and um, the kids have grown. I mean, their art is off the hook. It's so good. You know, they, they brought the program home because they have the, the artwork, the art materials to go home with. So a lot of kids made their own home studios. Um, parents got involved. Some parents have become artists too. Some of the kids have become professional artists at 10 years old. That you know, is incredible. Really good. So that's where it's at right now. Is there like a support network for that? Is it, how, how is this funded? Is it, is there a way to donate? Yeah, it's, um, it's all volunteer and it's all donation. Um, and, uh, you know, so anything that anybody donates um, helps us a lot to fill those bags every week. So um, we have a, a website, studiomariposa.org, or you could go to our PayPal, which is art at studiomariposa.org and, um, and you know, drop whatever you can spare because that gets directly 100% turned into art supplies that kids are gonna bring home, work on all week, and it's like changing lives and making artists, serious artists, like no kidding, some really good art. So for all our listeners, we will have a link in the description to both the PayPal link as well as the website if you do want to donate to this cause. It's making Naco, Mexico into an art town. Like that is like, there are so many good artists there. I'm not kidding. Like really good artists. Um, and kids and adults that are just growing from this time. And I'll just add that... Um, you know, we've been so fortunate to have uh, our vaccines here, but they don't have that in Mexico so much at this point. NACO doesn't really have it. Um, so, you know, they're, they're somewhere, they're, they're kind of where we were many months ago. But they don't have access to shots or uh, they don't have access to vaccinations? Yeah, it's, it's really spotty at this time. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope it I hope that they start to be able to get access, but right now, not so much. So, you know, this program means all the more because, well, they're not in school, you know, they're suffering, um, families are hungry, you know. I mean, we're not feeding them, but at least we're feeding them color and, you know, art supplies and the stuff that we can do from Studio Mariposa. Donate! Stretch. <laughs> You got to bear with me on this one. This is not my question. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have a question from the audience, a fellow named Doug S from <laughs> the Warren district in Bisbee. His question is when you are going to give up on the hill car? Tell us about the hill car more. All right. I'm just going to start with the fact that like I have a regular car and it just died yesterday for <laughs> now, but the hill car runs year after year <laughs> after year, kind of like Hillary, but you know, it's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm Hillary till I die. I'm sorry, y'all. You're stuck with me and the hill car because that thing is going to run forever. So, you know, hey, do you still have your pantsuit? Of course I have many pantsuits. 
um with hillary on it played by hillary and all that with hillary all over it um you know he has pantsuits with hillary's face she painted them but yeah. with hillary's face all i mean pantsuits all over it's incredible <laughs> well, what's a pantsuit like trousers like um not unlike something like this you know yeah so, okay uh, hillary i painted hillary all over it and then i went out on the campaign trail you know yeah but, very cool I've seen the I've seen the Hillary car. I remember <laughs> I was at Safeway. I was like, "Dude, look at that car!" And you were like, "Yeah, that's Gretchen's car." <laughs> it's yeah, so, no, can I say? Tells <laughs> so <laughs> much. Weight. I don't think there's an empty space of, of of where there's no art on that car. No, there's probably not. It yeah. it, it has to be. You know, I gotta freshen it up now and again, like anything. But. Uh, which, you know, it's about time for, but, um, you know, yeah, I think, um, I think D Doug S. Yes. Doug S. Who's that? I wonder who that is. <laughs> okay. You know, you're just stuck living with it because um, Hillary ain't going nowhere. Neither am I. What can I say? The hill car stays the hill car. <laughs> <laughs> so Gretchen, you are a follower thrower <laughs> of weird and original and inventive shit can you tell me who what and how is fake jan <laughs> oh wow oh wow i did it i did All it right. i like that one um <laughs> <laughs> That's a long one. It's like we were gonna do a fake jam festival in Bisbee. It was 2012. Who is fake jam? What is fake jam? You might ask. If you remember from the Brady Bunch, not the show, but the short-lived variety hour that came afterwards, there was a um the, the real Jan, Eve Plum, refused to be on it. So another woman named Jerry Rochelle was um fake jam. <laughs> So somehow, well, it was actually, I saw it online. There was like fake Jan day. Jan two was fake Jan day. I was like, oh my God, like my mind just dreamed up this thing, fake Jan festival. And um, we worked really hard on it. We had all kinds of art. We had music. We had, we had an art car, a fake Jan art car and all this stuff. But like <laughs> <laughs> fake Jan had like these manager couple that was like, I don't know, um, managing her that just got more and more demanding and just got more and more outrageous. And we had to pull the plug before the festival ever happened, sad to say. No fake jam festival. So wait, so the Brady Bunch wanted to keep going, but the real jam is like, no. And they got a fake jam? Yeah, it was the Brady Bunch variety hour. Okay. It was a sparkle darkle spectacular that um you really should check out i mean it was so great that's why um i liked the idea of the fake jam festival because um i love the brady bunch like i've always been a huge like brady bunch and partridge family are like my jams so um the idea of a fake jam festival was like had all the razzle dazzle of the 70s variety show but also had the brady's like the best of many worlds <laughs> I'm going to throw another one at you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you remember stalking the stalker? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love the stalk. The, the, yeah. So when stock, um, with stocks, yeah, uh, moved to town, we like, we heard she was, she moved across from Doug to stock Doug. So we were like, let's go stalk the stalker. Right. So then we like dressed up like stalkers. I forget. Yeah, we tried to. <laughs> like a butterfly. No, we had a net. What do <laughs> stalkers? Net. I was gonna say, what do stalkers dress like? Well, we just went <laughs> with a butterfly net and butterfly net, net, sunglasses, hat, you know, like okay. baseball cap. Incognito. <laughs> Incognito with a giant net. Yeah, we I did. Like that. I swear to Christ, this happened. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaking around outside of her house, peeking in, you know. She was sleeping out, uh, sleeping out in the living room. Yeah. And then we got pictures of her because we were stalking the stalker. But then someone took pictures of us taking uh, pictures of her. Yeah. It was uh -oh. fucking incredible. Yeah. I mean, it was so fun. 
<laughs> I know. It was so much fun that it, you know, I know you're not supposed to like stalkers because they're, <laughs> but like it made me want to dream up this idea of a festival after the failed fake jam festival, which I'm another festival I haven't done, but it would be called Stalker Stock. And it was like you could stalk or you could be stalked, you know, <laughs> you could be a stalker or you could be stalked all weekend. Wouldn't that be fun? Like, welcome stalkers to Bisbee. There would have to be some stalking girls, though. You know, yeah. you could stalk as long as A, B, C, D, E, and that could be a lot of fun. Right. Like, I feel like I was a pretty good stalker, you know, back to the Hillary thing. But like, I thought I was pretty good at that because like, I'm an open stalker. I'm, I'm like, I'm, hello, I'm stalking you. Um, <laughs> I'm your stalker. Um, but I'm also useful. I do things that you might want. Like, I'm sure Stanhope's had a few of those folks that are like, I'm a stalker, but I made myself really useful. So now he becomes in. That's true. You know I, mean? I think it's incredibly endearing. Amazing food, not me, but like, you know, somebody who does something. I happen to do art and, you know, like, and I'm, and I, you know, do art cards and stuff like that. So like, that's my stalking stock and trade as it were. I got one more for you. <laughs> I was talking to Stanhope earlier this morning and all we wrote down, and hopefully you can explain this, flags in dog poop. Ah. Can, you help, can you help me out with flags in dog poop? We <laughs> couldn't come up with anything more, but we were like, ask her this. Yeah. So help, help well, me out. They were called poop signs. <laughs> and they were little teeny signs, like put on a toothpick. Yeah. That would say really nothing about poop. But would tell you something, and you'd have to like get down on your hands and knees to read <laughs> what this little sign was trying to tell you. In dot, like the, the poop is the planter, okay? Yeah. Okay. Like okay. because there was a lot of dogs, and it was pre, especially this was like I don't know, six years ago or something. But people weren't picking up their dog shit so much then. So like the poop signs you know, did two things. They pointed out that there's poop everywhere, but they also make great planters for your little signs. And it's really <laughs> fun to see people like get down on their hands and knees and read like something so abstract and like nothing to do with poop. <laughs> but, would it, but, but so it, it, the, the, the signs were there on like toothpicks attached to the poop? A little tiny piece of like, it looked like a little sign, like you'd hold up like a protest sign, right, right. a little miniature protest sign, like made by a little mini elf that would say something like, oh geez, I can't even come up and on and off the cuff, but like sometimes like just a little part of this, something that was going on that morning for that person or you know, whatever, like, and you might, and they might go around the corner, so you have to read the back, you know, you really have to, like, get down there and read that sign. But the um, sign was connected to the toothpick, and the toothpick was set into the dog shit. Yeah. That is fucking brilliant. I know. Yeah, you'd These read, like, are... one part, and then it would go to the next poop to finish the story, you know? <laughs> <laughs> But it never mentioned poop. So was that effective or were people more intrigued? They're like, we need to have more poop. Kind of both. We're, I was kind of excited about poop. I would, go, I, I would go on a fucking poop scavenger hut and read all the notes. <laughs> yeah, I think people kind of liked it. I, I mean, we were having fun making the signs. We'd have like poop sign parties. I'll get to go write these little notes and then go around town. So speaking of poop, Gretch, I, this just came to me. I didn't, I don't have this written down or anything, but there was this picture I got at a yard sale of a Barbie doll pooping <laughs> on a canvas. Yeah. It was hilarious. And we recreated it with me pooping on a canvas. Well, Gretchen's canvas. Of course she painted the poop, but I just wanted a lanyard so bad because Stanhope had lanyards yeah. forever and we did yeah. it. We, yeah, we did I, it. I was just looking at that a minute ago. You're like, you, re, you recreated that Barbie thing so perfectly, except that <laughs> you painting, in your case, you were painting with your ass, but. Right, <laughs> right. But uh, it was hysterical. <laughs> but that's the kind of shit me and Gretch do is we have these, one of us, has a wild fucking idea. We call each other and the other person helps make it happen. It's time to bring out some more. Would you agree, Bingo? Oh, 
do it bring it up we're gonna have to start it's it's like it's springtime in oh you know, yeah we gotta we gotta start brainstorming about a new yeah or another yes we do we do that i'm gonna count you in on so gretch you met dear abby and epi and landers did you have any questions for them <laughs> no i didn't okay. but, um other than probably like, would you like some pate or something? I was working <laughs> at a, um, I catered these parties. At, I grew up on Martha's Vineyard. So in the summer, I'd go back and I'd cater these small parties that maybe had like uh, a dozen or so people, but they were all like kind of old school celebrity types, you know, and, and definitely in the industry of media and um, um, TV anchors and stuff. So this one um, was happening at the same place it always is, but I happened to be living in a, a hand-built raft at the time um, at that, that summer. So it was a raft that was the shape of a dragon. It was built out of just uh, logs and foam, and but it had like, it looked like a dragon. It was completely painted, mural, super, super colorful, colorful uh, canvas and my ex-partner and I lived on that for a couple of years as we traveled around. So anyway, happened to anchor it right in front of this person's house unknowingly. I did not know they were going to have a party that week. So it was like right in front of the house, this giant dragon raft. <laughs> and, um, and so I asked the person I was catering I'm like, for, I'm like, Shirley, should I move that, move the raft? She's like, no, 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 they'll love it, leave it. So, um, so that day, um, a lot of the people came by boat actually to this party. So it was um, Walter Cronkite and uh, Phil Donahue and um, Marlo Thomas and Ann Landers and Ab whatever, Epi and Ann, however they go, they have nicknames. I don't really know them. Just saying, there was a bunch, there was Carly Simon, there was Diane Sawyer and Mike Wallace and all these people, luminaries of the business. <laughs> so the boat's like sticking, it was a rainy day and the boat's just sitting there bobbing and like this sort of, you know, boring, dark kind of atmosphere, but then there's a super bright raft. And so Bill Donahue was like down by the edge of the shore and he's like, what, looking out at it. And I'm like, I walk up to him and, I'm, and, I, and he said, do you know what that is? And I'm like, yeah, it's my sailing raft. And he's like, whoa, because he's a sailor. He came, he and Marlo came on a boat as did the Cronkites and some of the other ones. Um, he was like blown away. So he, he goes, oh, you have to meet Marlo or whatever. So he grabs him by the arm and he pulls me into the tent where, because it was a little rainy. Marlo, she's standing um, with a bunch of friends, the Landers sisters, as they were, um, all the people I just said were literally just standing right there. He's got me by the arm. He pulls me up. He's like, Marlo, you have to meet. This is Gretchen. She has the dragon raft. It's right out there. Um, we have to go tomorrow for, for um, tomorrow. We'll go out and we'll, we'll go see this boat. I got to see it. It's amazing. Whatever. And he's got me by the arm. And she's like, yeah, like Marlo. She's like, hey, we have plans tomorrow. We're gonna have these friends of ours out on our boat for our party. Blah 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 blah. And he's like, they're they start fighting, and everyone's staring. Like the whole thing becomes a sideshow. He's got me by the arm. You can see the bragging rap bobbing in the background, and, and I'm like, oh no, deer in the headlights. And he's got me by the arm. I can't believe. And he's like, they're fighting. And then finally, he goes, Marlo this will not do. And um, she just was like, ah! like, she was so mad. And everyone was just standing there. I had like Carly Simon and these ladies that are behind you and all those folks like just staring yeah. at the whole scene. And I was so embarrassed, but um, he finally let go of my arm and I took off and he, he made arrangements to go see me the next day. Needless to say, Marlo won and he never did show up. He didn't show up. But uh, that weird minute of having all those people just like, you know, captive. Uh, we were all captive. They were embarrassed. I was embarrassed. <laughs> and our old Phil were having this major fight. That, that is so <laughs> surreal. Like you just docked there. You had no idea whose house was right there. 
I ain't, we always were on anchor. It's just a place to anchor on the harbor. Right. So I, I didn't think of it when we dropped anchor. I, I didn't know I'd be catering that party the following, you know, that week or whatever. <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> but anyway, so that's that story of um, Ann Landers and Dear Abby that they yeah. were there staring at me like, <laughs> would it be rude to ask you to, um, like, just what your plans are. Like, I'm just curious, you know, it's like we got this whole, as I said in the beginning about the pandemic for us, for those lucky enough to be vaccinated that we can kind of go out and start doing stuff. I was curious with, you know, you guys, if um, you have some thoughts or plans about that um, in the near future. So I think the most important thing for us We've gotten so much enjoyment from doing the podcast and making music together. We've been putting so much energy into the podcast. I think we really just want to um, put out some more music and mm -hmm. and keep making podcasts. And um, I think that would be the most fulfilling thing ever. And uh, obviously socialization is really huge. Um, and it's really great to, you know, be able to hang out with friends and, 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 and squeeze, cause you have to get that socialization in there, but also the reality is like, okay, you got a podcast, you got a band. So it's like this weird work life balance that, um, that, uh, I think we're trying to figure out. One more question in that department. Yeah. Would you ever consider doing like a, a, a show in Bisbee, like an outdoor one? You know, Absolutely. like the John has been doing some really fantastic outdoor um, concerts that I've been seeing lately is, would you think about anything like that in your future? The answer is absolutely yes. If I can get him to quit writing songs in 14-3 time, we'll be able to play live. Yeah, that, I can, <laughs> I can Gretch, say. Go Gretch, you got something? Pick you, Gretch, <laughs> come on, ask a All question. Right. Ask a question. Let's go. Gretch. Um, can I make your backdrop when you guys go live? Can I make your backdrop? Would you I would be sure? so ecstatic. I'd be so honored. I love your artwork. That would be a dream come true. No, I'd love to. That would be fun. I'd love to be part of it. Anyway, you guys, when you do get out live or whatever, that would be so much fun. Such a, such a thing to look forward to. And um, any yeah. part of it, I will do. And, and oh, I love that. How would I be able to see more of your artwork? Well, um, there's, um, I have a lot of art currently at um, Cafe Roca. I have a lot of art at um, Red Shoes Hair Salon in Bisbee. But, um, you know, online is really the best. To be honest, I post most of it on social media, like as okay. I speak it. And um, my website's a little behind the times. I need to update that. But like I'm always on social media posting everything that I paint. And a lot of times I sell that way because um, it's just like, you know, of the moment I put it up and um, it oftentimes sells, which I'm very thankful for. <laughs> so, so is that Instagram, Facebook, Twitter? Whatever? Yeah, all the above. My first memory of you is at Roca. Me and Stan Hope were sitting at a two top table and you came over and it was so moving and i don't have the memory from the coma to know exactly what you said but you you made it like you wanted to meet me and not him you didn't not not that it was not him but you you made a, a specific effort to meet me as well. And it made me feel so incredible because Stan Up was the shit. He was the shit back then. And I felt, I walked out of the Roka feeling like the shit myself. <laughs> Do you remember this? Absolutely. So what happened was um, I was hearing about you for like a year. I would hear like you were mythical. Like <laughs> who, what, who is this person? She wears, she's like bald and she wears pink prom dresses and <laughs> she's really outrageous and she's really, really cool. And I'm like, I've never seen her. I want to see, I want to know this person. Who is this person? And um, I, I really did not know who Doug Stanhope was at the time. 
at all. <laughs> so when you finally came in, and you, I think you were actually wearing that, like the pink prom dress. Or I remember it. No hair at the time. So you look, yeah. you know, as you always do, quite stunning. And I was just like, bingo. <laughs> You're bingo. Oh my God. I've been wanting to meet you for so long, for like two years. And I just talked right past him because I didn't know who he was. I, and that wasn't part of what I'd heard, you know, for you, for yeah. me, I heard all the stuff about you and I was like, that's somebody I need to know. And I, I just didn't do my homework. And so <laughs> about Doug, so I talked right past them, which was kind of rude, but I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, I loved it. I like, hey, Bingo. Oh my God. Oh my God. I've been dying to meet you. I didn't even, I was questioning whether you're real or not, you know, and there you were. So I was just really happy to finally meet you. Um, and yeah, and that's how that. <laughs> this part of the podcast goes out to Doug Stanhope. I hope you're watching. You're a loser. No one cares. Thank you. Thank you. No, that that really did make me feel so fucking special. All right, give it, give an outro, and we'll just see how it works out. Well, now the pressure's on. Okay. I'm staring at you. Oh, I can't I say. I can't say. Well, okay. Yeah, I won't. Do um, that. Do, 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 do. Okay. Gretchen, thank you so much for being with us today. We're super stoked that you're going to be on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Bingo, this is where you actually have to chime in, too. Okay, Gretchen, what did the O say to the Q? No idea. Dude, your dick's hanging out. <laughs> Drop the mic. Boom. Yeah. <laughs>